Good morning. <laughs> Stuff beeping all over the place. How are you guys? Oh, my name is Brenda Neckbottle, and I am an HR professional. I'm also the owner of Best Practices, and um, we are here for our first inaugural kickoff on Coffee Talk. I um, really want to thank you guys for joining. I'm very excited about this this morning. This is going to get an opportunity um, for everybody to go ahead and uh, ask questions uh, that they may not necessarily have the ability to ask in the environment that they're in. Um, this is specifically for businesses. This is not asking questions at an individual level. Um, and then also what's very important to know is that <clears throat> in doing this, this is not any type of um, replacement for any type of legal advice. I'm not an attorney. I'm, I'm not a JD. Um, I can't provide legal advice as to what you guys can do. I can give you suggestions as to what you consider doing. Um, and a lot of who I talk to and what I target is um, small and micro organizations. So um, I also, uh, this is actually also for the practitioner as well. Um, there may be unique situations and challenges that come up um, that you might just need a soundboard for. So and you guys are welcome to go ahead and jump in and uh, start asking questions. And, you know, again, this is an inaugural kickoff. <clears throat> I don't know, this whole concept is new. So we'll probably see me doing a little bit more talking in the weeks to come. Um, but eventually we'll get people on board and uh, some, asking some good questions. But in the meantime, we have wound up um, compiling some really awesome questions as well. So that will be, um, you know, very helpful and very useful in the process. So there we go. So first off, I want to uh, take a, a quick moment and thank our friends over at Victory Coffees. You guys, look, this is HR Coffee Talk for a reason. If you haven't done it already, take your phone with you, plug your headset in, go grab yourself some coffee, have a, a mid-morning break here where you can just kind of sit and gather some information. Um, so I definitely want to thank our friends over at Victory Coffee. Uh, they have supplied me with some Go Juice, which I really need. Um, and this is actually my favorite tumbler of all time. It's a, a phenomenal cup of coffee, and it's just, it's just good. That's just all there is to it. Um, you can actually find Victory Coffees on Instagram at victory underscore coffees, C-O-F-F-E-E-S. They've got a phenomenal uh, program. And, I mean, it's just a really good cup of coffee. I mean, if you just like good coffee, this is definitely a brand that you want to look into. It's veteran-owned, veteran-operated. Uh, know the folks very well. Know how their operation is, and I know – but they're extremely focused on quality and making sure that the product that they're delivering is exceptionally healthy as well. It doesn't contain a lot of the pesticides and all the other stuff that comes into our environment. So <clears throat> check them out because they're fantastic. Anyway, so um, again, I'd like to welcome you. This is our inaugural session. Um, you're going to be able to catch the replay of this on, you, on our YouTube channel over at Best Practices. Um, it will be available in 24 hours. So this is a 30-minute session, and um, I'm going to be jumping over to Facebook <clears throat> and at the bottom half of the hour. And what we'll do is we'll actually combine both of them together. Um, actually, the recording is coming from another angle on the camera. So uh, still going to figure out a couple of details, trying to figure out the jive and the groove and, you know, what is this all going to look like. But the concept is is really what's the most important thing and and you know um my goal i've got specific goals and those do i want to you know and objectives that i want to do for you guys so um i'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second but so a couple of announcements tomorrow is going to be the release of the next episode on our podcast series <clears throat> which is the uh, best practices in human resource podcast and um it's called the employee landscape and finding talent uh to grow your team. And that's a real challenge right now. <clears throat> um, so that's going to be kind of interesting. Got some good stuff to share and hopefully uh, some tips and some uh, different types of um, ideas and suggestions that you guys can tap into on today's current market. Um, what a lot of people will run into is that they're looking for that information. What they do is they go to on the web <clears throat> to try and uh, you know, collect that information. And ultimately what they wind up finding is they find a lot of um, older information, but it's at a different time period. And so, you know, right now our market has shifted again slightly. And, um, you know, there's more jobs out there to be filled than there are people to fill them. Um, 
you know, which is a sign of a really good economy. So we're definitely going to, um, you know, kind of talk a little bit about that. If you if you try and find information that's on the web, you're likely going to find some outdated information that it's good, but it may not necessarily apply to the current market, and that's ultimately what's important. <clears throat> so um, so we're going to you know pull some of that. So you know what this half hour is about is to really identify some resources to help you with your HR best practices and really defining your gold standard in business in this particular segment of your operation. Um, again, who's this for? This is really for small and uh, micro businesses as well as individual practitioners. And um, it gives an opportunity to you know, talk about the stuff that matters. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of really great content that's out on the web. Um, if you do any type of research in the field of HR, you're going to find phenomenal stuff. You're going to, you know, read a lot of stuff about diversity and inclusion. You're going to read a lot about, you know, how to move your business forward in, in some abstract manners versus, you know, as well as practical manners. But you know what? That doesn't always apply to the small business, and it certainly doesn't apply to the micro organization. And, and how I define small business is uh, companies that are 50 and under, um, typically around like that 35 market. And, and that's consistent with what I see um, in the payroll sector, uh, meaning payroll provider sector. Small businesses really can be, you know, up to about 250 employees. I mean, that's still a pretty good size small business. It's just has a little has other demands to it. Um, if your government contractor, small business actually has a specific definition to uh, doesn't always necessarily equate to the number of employees that you have and in conjunction with the revenue and the amount of money that you actually bring in. So it um, can be a little bit different in that regard. <clears throat> but um, small business is small business and it is there's a lot of it out there and it makes up nearly if not Right now, I'd have to double check the numbers again, but at least almost, if not a little bit over than 50% of our uh, of our economy here in the United States. So it's very important to nurture that. Um, it's also one of those situations that if you're a small business in the field of HR, well, you may have you know 10 to 16 employees, and that's fantastic. Um, but if you're not following the same HR regulations that any other company has to follow, the smaller you are, the bigger the target you become. And that's very much a truth. And, and sometimes I run into people that like to argue and debate that. But, you know, the thing is, is that it's not that these organizations, um, you know, government bodies are out there attempting to find you just because you're a small business. What happens is that when the door is opened for them to come in, they quickly recognize that you're small. You may not necessarily have capabilities. You may not necessarily have the background and the knowledge or the right person that's in the seat or really honestly couldn't even afford to put uh, a full-time tenured experienced HR practitioner in a small company. And so therefore they know where to look. <clears throat> they know that, um, you know, your I-9 documents may not necessarily be up to par. They may understand you may not have a handbook or you may not have certain practices in place where there are just things that you're doing out of sheer naivete that you, unfortunately they're gonna they're gonna call those things forward and like i said it's not that they're out um like the u.s version of a gestapo but they are definitely out there <clears throat> and when it becomes present they're going to bring that stuff forward so as a small business you really have to take advantage of trying to figure out what it is that you're going to do to protect yourself and uh, that's a lot of what I work on with my clients and the company. So um, I did have some questions that came in uh, today um, through some email delivery that I have. And um, I've got the window cracked open a little bit. It's spring finally here in Virginia. Thank the good Lord. The trees are flowering. The, literally the pollen is everywhere. And if you start looking at it this time of year and your car has a light lime green coating on it, um, that means spring is officially here, so um, we've got some weather coming in. If we get a thunderstorm right behind me over here, you'll probably wind up seeing Lola popping in, uh, sticking her head in, because up here it's like safety in numbers. Uh, she is our, she's my veteran wellness dog, uh, veteran comfort dog. She's not trained; she just has this innate ability uh, that when I work in the veteran community, that she tends to 
just calm people down naturally. So um, when the veterans come over or I bring her with or whatever it is that I decide to do with her, I use her specifically for that. So, um, and she loves the attention. She's very mellow. Uh, she is a nine-year-old, uh, Great Pyrenees. <clears throat> and so with their temperament, um, you know, her job, she's always on duty. But even when she's sleeping, you know, she's out there making sure that I am well cared for and that I'm well taken care of. And so uh, that's what she's used for. And either behind me, oh, there he is. All right, behind me <laughs> is her little companion champ, the Wonder Dog. Uh, he is my 14-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Uh, you may very well wind up seeing him walking around as well, but uh, probably not. And if you hear snoring in the background, that would be him. So it's not me with some respiratory issue. And he's a he's a great little boy. He's been around my world for a very long time, about 12 years now. And uh, he's an old man. So <clears throat> anyway, so some questions that have come through that we get a chance to kind of talk about today. Um, one of the questions that I discovered, uh, I found on the web, actually, just to kind of kick this off. Uh, one question is, how do I deal with an employee who is slow in coding and claims that he's trying to code faster but isn't getting any faster? How can I get him fired? Um, moving to Agile has shown us how slow he really is. So, so not 100% sure if the person that's asking this question is an employee or a supervisor. But my thought process in on this is that I would, I would want to find out some more information about this. First off, I would want to find out who, who is asking the question. If it's a supervisor, my first thing would be, okay, <clears throat> so you guys have moved, you know, your practices over to Agile. Um, what exactly are you starting to notice? And so where's the benchmark, right? So you got the employee and then you've got what they should be doing. So my question is, is what's the benchmark? So if the benchmark is here and the employee's here, my question is, what are they doing to rise, raise this person up? Um, and ultimately, when you've got, you know, any type of employee challenge, you know, you're going to want to step back and you're going to want to meet that individual where they are. And if it turns out that they need some additional training or they need um, some level of um you know, next step up <clears throat> to get them to do what it is that you need them to do, uh, then you're going to have to invest in that individual. Now, if you've invested in that individual for a, a certain period of time and they still haven't picked it up or they still haven't, um, you know, latched on or they're not taking it serious or anything like that, well, then now you can start talking about, okay, so how – how are we going to address this? Which means that you're probably going to have to do some level of performance management and start, um, you know, working them out uh, of the organization. Um, I would not recommend <clears throat> immediately terminating somebody just because, uh, you know, they're slow. There's there's a two-way street that's going on here when it comes to when it comes to an individual's development. You know, you want an organization that's going to demonstrate good faith that they've given the employee every opportunity to, you know, move the needle forward and that they've worked with the organization and that they've uh, taken responsibility for saying, hey, listen, we got somebody that's a low end performer. Um, we're going to give them a certain period of time uh, to make those modifications, make the attempt. You know, if they're showing progress and they're starting to grow and develop. And you know what? Hang on to them because. You know, you, you've got that. But if they stall and they start or they start going backwards, well, you know, then it's time to figure out what you guys want to do with that level of talent. Um, another question that I saw online today, I loved this one. I just thought it was great. Uh, so I wanted to bring it forward. <clears throat> <laughs> and it's really funny. So over my career, I've I've had people ask the questions like, "How do you handle a crying female?" And you know, that's that's not an easy situation by by any stretch of the imagination. Huh. Excuse me. <clears throat> but my question is, how do you handle a crying narcissist? <laughs> Who would have thought, right? But they're out there, and and I used to work with one, believe it or not, years ago. And this guy was he very much into himself. And, I mean, I would have taken the crying female over the crying narcissist any day of the week and twice on Sunday. And it was just incredible. It just, you know, the boss of the whole operation 
uh, constantly about himself. He was, you know, always talking about golfing, but he cried. And you know what? In all fairness, there are elements of him where he did have a really good heart. Um, but he was, it, life was all about him. There was just no doubt about it. Um, and so why does a narcissist cry? Why does a narcissist cry? How do you handle the crying narcissist? And you know what? God bless God bless his boss, uh, who I also know very well. It's not easy, you know. I mean, you're anybody who's crying at work, I mean it's it's you're talking about stuff that's happening in the workplace and, and you're talking about human emotions and you know, there's all all sorts of colors in it, right? You know, a human resources is all about operating in the gray. And you're going to have multiple shades of it. You're going to go from everything from light gray all the way up to dark charcoal. As far as, you know, their clarity, their depth, and, you know, complexity and um, how complicit you can be with them, too. But, um, but a crying narcissist is a very hard one to deal with because you just want, like you said, get over it. Um, so how do you deal with it? So like anybody who's having any type of emotional crack, um, my recommendation is, is, you know, exercise the level of empathy. Um, you know, try and do your best to understand, even if you don't necessarily agree with it, even if you understand that there are also different levels of uh, accountability, like they may have contributed to their own situation, or somebody contributed. You got some people that are more sensitive than others, and you got other individuals that are, you know, tough as nails. But everybody has emotions, and everybody um, will convey them in some manner. So, you know, some people clam up, some people lash out, some people break down, some people will hide them, and you'll just never know what's going on with them. And that's fine. But you know, when you're when you're dealing with somebody who's having that level of emotional um, upheaval, <clears throat> and they're starting to break down, well, then you know, my suggestion is exercise a level of empathy. Uh, but don't be afraid to reset the expectations as to what is required of the role, what is required of the person. If that means it's like I need you to toughen this up a little bit and hang in there and not be as vulnerable um, openly, you can do that. Um, some people are going to be capable of it. Some people are not. And, you know, and that's fine. Yes, like I said, we're dealing with human beings. Um, I saw another really good question I thought we could share and talk about today, too, at least I can just chat with you on. And, and I think this is, this is pertinent to anybody who is in a position where they're hiring, um, they're interviewing, both on the HR side, but it's over on the managerial side. And this is, what red flag did you ignore in a coworker to only have regrets later? And, oh my gosh, I remember the first time I really felt the sting of something like this. I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I worked for five Fortune 500 companies. I'm very, very fortunate. Um, so one of my objectives is to bring Fortune 500 experience into small business workforce. But I remember this person as clear as day. We actually had a visit from the president of the company, the vice president of the company, who eventually became the president of the organization. And kind of do a little backtrack here and give you the backstory on this. I was learning how to interview I, effectively. I was learning, you know, this organization's process of, you know, candidate selection. I was learning how to um, review an application. I was learning how to think critically. So it was a big learning time. And when I'm in a learning mindset, I get real quiet. It's hard to believe that I'm on this and I'm gathered yeah, up, right? But <laughs> but I get really quiet and, and I tone it back. I rein my personal ego in and my opinions because I don't know. And I'm actually in the presence of somebody else who does. And so I want to learn more about what I can. So they were kind of gave me a little bit more lead on this than either what was communicated or what I had interpreted and no, that's fine. And um, so I we took this into this <laughs> we took this inter this person through three interviews. Uh, and the final interview in our practice was with the location general manager. And at this time that person was out of the country on vacation. And so we had an acting general manager that was in place. And um, 
that interview just didn't feel right. This it wasn't the same person. I didn't know if I was supposed to speak up or not, and I didn't. And I've learned since that, yeah, speak up. So we went ahead and extended her the offer. She started. It was her first day, and we had the VP of the company. And and I was giving her a tour of the location. And around the corner comes the location manager who has not yet met this individual. And I guarantee you he would not have permitted us to extend an offer, looking back, hindsight being 2020, and, um, and the VP and the regional vice president. So we had all three significant influencers of the company literally standing right about, and I was all excited. Like I was going to introduce my new person, and I was really proud of myself. And you know, just kind of didn't really think too much about that last interview because I don't have you know authority to say yes, we should hire this person. No, we shouldn't. Anyway, so I entered this this, this coworker, and she was an absolute bump on the butt of a frog on a log. It was, she was just like, hi. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the first day. And she is just a wash out within the first 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, what did I do? What did we do? And I just kept a straight face and, you know, it was really good to see you again. And I'm excited to see you again. She, and they go to shake her hand and she was just this absolute like limpers like if she had a bone in her body and you wouldn't have known it was just absolute you know it was ugh, i couldn't believe it and and she was problematic ever since and i'm like this is not the same person that i interviewed one two i saw it in three but i didn't see it in one or two so yeah, I, I carried that one with me for a long time and I never forgot it. And so anytime I got into a situation where I did not see that level of energy, I was reflecting back on that person. I'm like, yeah, no, we're not going there. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, that was just absolutely nuts. I couldn't believe that. But, yeah, what are you going to do? You live and learn, right? <clears throat> um, so one of my goals that I'm like I was talking about earlier, one of the objectives that I have in doing this and what I do with the podcast is um, I really want to provide you guys with resources to help you with your best practices. So I got a really cool resource that I want to share with you all today. Um, I have read this. It's a phenomenal book. Um, this is a lot of what I learned in the collegiate level when I was in college and I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree. It's, um, you know, certainly something that if you're going to have a seat at the table in the field of HR, you are going to need this for sure. You, If you're going to have a seat at the table, you're going to need this for sure. Um, and this is something that's called um, business acumen. <clears throat> it's very important. And, and basically what it means is that you have to have a level of understanding of um, how to speak the money, the speak the money talk, um, how you're going to convey your ideas and um, identify return on investment. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, sign up for a particular service or something like that, and you need to get approval um, from your top officers, um, you know, this you're going to have to learn how to speak this. And the more you understand how to do this, uh, the, the more effective you're going to be in your role and the more valuable ultimately you're going to be um, within the organization. So um, even for individuals who have started small businesses and have learned it the hard way, meaning they've had to learn the money talk the hard way, but maybe not necessarily have all of uh, the language down pat. This is it. This is the book right here. It's called Seeing the Big Pictures. I don't know if it's backwards on this camera or not, but it's called Seeing the Big Picture. And it is uh, by a gentleman by the name of Kevin Cope. And I met Kevin a couple of years ago over at the Sherm Convention in New Orleans. Yes. And then we we had a, a nice uh, recap and re-meeting over in the Sherm Convention in Chicago. Um, not sure if he's going to be at the Sherm Convention in Las Vegas or not, but he does this fantastic um, a lecture on <clears throat> understanding how money impacts uh, the human capital aspect within the building or er, building the operation and it really helps you understand uh, the financial management aspect of it and I want to show you this model this is what this model is based off of right here so you can see that in the model it talks about 
you know, um, you know, individual growth, personal growth, profit growth. It's about growth in several different directions, but it's about cash, people, growth, assets, and profit, and what all those things mean. And it's not, you know, a money mongering type of thing. These are important things to keep business afloat. So you can find this on Amazon.com. Um, he is the founder of Acumen Learning. It is a New York Times bestselling author. Honestly, this is the only book that I have been able to find out there on understanding business acumen. And it's it's easy reading. It's easy to follow. He breaks it down into digestible chunks, which is, I think, in my opinion, the ultimate um, success of any <laughs> anybody writing a book is how well you can translate real life and real situations into um, information that other individuals can absorb. So you can definitely find that. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we called that one out. Um, yeah, so good stuff, right? So um, we got a couple minutes left. I, I really want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in. I know that we've kind of had an empty session here. This is this really is a whole new thing. So, um, you know, I started this practice back in November of 2018, and here we are. It's April. Uh, so it's, you know, it's green, it's fresh, and it's all good. And I'm just really looking forward to all the good things that are going to be coming out of this and, and particularly all the awesome things that I can share with you guys. So something else that I want to throw out there that if you guys are in a position where you've got an individual in the company who's a leader and you're looking to provide them some form of leadership development program, Jump on ours. We've got an awesome one. Um, there's two individuals that I have teamed up with. They are both um, retired Command Master Chief Navy SEALs, a 30-year and a 27-year veteran. Combined um, with the three of us in our experience, you're looking at almost 80 years of leadership experience uh, pulled together to be able to talk about foundations um, of what we feel that are important qualities that go into an effective leader. And it's a three-day course, and it's a lot. It's something that's not out there. <clears throat> There's a lot of leadership stuff. There's a tremendous amount of information on this, but and there's also stuff you know that's in the SEAL community. But this is this is very different, and we combine uh, leadership with HR. We've got three full days. <clears throat> Our first course right now is planning, expecting to run on May first uh, through the third. And uh, we've got some incredible team building events that are included in that. And what's really awesome is that no one person is going to succeed in this particular course. It actually is going to involve the entire team. So to find this, you're going to want to visit the website at www.bestpractices.work and click on the Forged link. And you can also find me and the other things that I do on um, a couple different areas. You got the website, that's a good place to start because that's gonna be the hub of where all that information is located. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Best Practices in HR. Uh, podcast episodes, we're on 11 different platforms and that is the Best Practices in HR um, episodes. And then um, also this is going to be part of the recap on the live YouTube channel. So thank you so much, guys, for joining. And um, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. All right. So we're going to jump over to Facebook now. This is good stuff. I love it. Hey everybody, it's Brenda over at Best Practices and welcome uh, to the Facebook live episode and uh, very excited to see you guys today. We just got done on the Instagram side and um, we're gonna have we're gonna have some really good stuff. So welcome to HR Coffee Talk, <clears throat> and uh, I am your hostess. <laughs> so I am a 20-year practicing professional in the field of HR. Um, done a lot of work in the small business sector, in the government sector, and 
been very fortunate to work with five Fortune 500 companies, so uh, a lot of experience that's coming out. So um, before I begin, guys, go get your coffee. Literally, this is an opportunity for you guys to have a sit down, have a chat. Um, hopefully, we'll get some good questions coming in. This is a very um, early development of this particular type of program. I'm going to be planning on growing this over the long haul. So I'm um, going to spending every week with you guys and being available to answer questions. And um, yeah, we got to do that. So hmm, I love this stuff. So this is um, our friends over at Victory Coffee. Right here, start your day with the Victory. Fantastic coffee. I uh, highly recommend um, getting an opportunity to definitely pick up some. And you can find them at victorycoffees.com. And um, you can also find them on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, it's veteran-owned, <clears throat> uh, veteran-run organization. And they're very mindful about the – I mean, it's just good coffee. I mean, you just have to have good coffee, right? I'm sorry, it's like the elixir of life. And uh, what you'll find with their coffee is that they're very particular about where it's grown, how it's grown, it is fair traded. Um, it is also does not have the pesticides and the chemicals that um, you know, other manufacturers and other roasters will, will actually have, you know, the harvester. So they're pretty particular about where they get their beans from um, and they just, they just want you to have a good cup of coffee. So this is actually my favorite tumbler too. This thing is incredible. Uh, it goes a lot of places with me. So I'm surprised I haven't burned off the logo on it just yet, but it's really good. Mm. All right. So now that you got your coffee. <clears throat> All right. So, 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 so this is our inaugural session. Um, there's going to be a full one-hour replay. We just got done doing a session over on Instagram uh, for the Instagrammers. And we're going to do a full replay session um, that will combine both of the episodes um, on YouTube. So we've got another camera that's panning in on me right now. Um, unfortunately, I still have yet to figure out how to capture, download, and record on here. But, you know, technology will get all that figured out. But. Um, I don't expect to have right now a lot of questions that are coming in, and that's okay. Uh, eventually, we expect to do that, so it gives me a chance to just kind of spend time and listen. But if you do have a question, definitely chime in. Like I said, this is inaugural. This is day one. Um, the goal is to start developing that interaction with you guys and get information out there. Um, my number one objective is to actually provide resources, opportunity, information that is going to help uh, companies of you know various sizes particularly I focus in on small and micro organizations companies that are about the 50 employee and less and micro organizations which are you know anywhere between like five to ten employees um, you know you guys are small businesses it's important that you take the necessary steps to protect yourselves um, you know unfortunately the smaller you are you tend to have be a bigger target and what I mean by that is, is that, you know, if there's an organization that comes in to perform an audit, they're going to quickly realize that you may not necessarily have all the things in place. And so what they're going to do is they don't intentionally come after you to find your deficiencies. That is their job is to point them out, but they are going to start moving them and bringing them forward. So you are definitely going to want to, you know, put some practices in place to help protect yourself. Um, I also have a podcast series, which is really taking off and it's starting to gain some traction which is fantastic and um, you know we provide more information and more resources there as well um, it is called best practices and human resources we're right now on 11 different platforms and um, the next episode of that is coming out on Wednesday so I try and release a new episode every week on Wednesdays um, if you know projects life and you know some business travel interrupts with that then no, that's okay. You guys, there's a bunch of them out there that you can listen to if you've never heard them before. So, uh, But tomorrow we're actually going to talk more about the employment, the current employment landscape and um, how to find talent and to grow your team. So, um, so that's going to be pretty good. And there's a lot of information out there right now that in the web, like if you were to try and find, you know, like how do I find talent? Well, there's a lot of really good information out there, but it may not necessarily be timely and it may not necessarily add up to 
by the current, uh, you know, environment and the current job market, which is kind of tough. Right now it's an employee's market. And for the longest time, it's been an employer's market. Matter of fact, I remember back in 2007 um, looking at, you know, every now and again I start job shopping just to see what's out there and just see what the market is doing. And I think that's important for people to do. Just added more of a curiosity. And what I was learning was um, that, you know, it was it was what it is today, and that is that there's more people out there, or there's, excuse me, there's more jobs out there than people to fill them, um, and so you it takes a while uh, to get you know qualified candidates in. And matter of fact, I've got a couple of positions that I'm you know doing some searches for so for a couple of clients right now, and it's challenging. You know, we've been working on both of them for about like two weeks now, and I'm just now starting to find individuals that are responsive, that they're actually submitting and following the instructions and submitting their formal applications, and and it's tough. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that, and you know, get you some good information as to what things that you consider uh, can consider um, into your next next effort. So back, so I'm going back to 2007. So when we started to see the financial institutions, um, you know, coming to Congress and to the government, requesting their buyout or the the rescue, you know, the bailouts, not buyouts, but bailouts, and companies laying off thousands of employees every day. Um, it got scary. <clears throat> I remember it was very, very scary. Well, that shifted so quickly. So we literally went from an employee's market to an employer's market almost overnight, which meant that the employers could take their time and actually really truly identify the right talent for the right job. So there was a lot of competition to fill the job. And now there's a lot of jobs to find, you know, just the opposite. So, so that took about a good 10 years uh, to get a good shift. And I noticed the shift starting to take place in 2018, um, I found when I was doing at a position that I held as a director, um, I was doing uh, a lot of recruiting for engineering positions. And in a three month window, I went from easily being able to find engineers to, wow, ah, this is not, <laughs> this is taking some effort here now. And, uh, um, and particularly in the niche market that I was in, it was really starting to get interesting. And that's when I recognized that, okay, let's take a look at the economy again. And it was building back up. And we were starting to see, you know, a lot of positive improvement. So, you know, it shifted, it shifted very, very quickly. All right. So let's talk about what is going on. So if you haven't yet gotten your copy or you're interested in, and uh, getting some in copy. I want to make sure that you guys know how to get victory, get a hold of victory copies. They are available on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find them. Instagram is victory underscore coffees, C O F F E E S. And on uh, Facebook, you can find them at victory coffees, C O F F E E S S. So, um, so what this is going to be about is really starting to talk more about things that I can present to you guys. And I, you know, even though we probably aren't going to have quite a few individuals pop in, <clears throat> um, you know, if you do have a question and you are in the house, by all means, uh, definitely make sure that you're asking that, you're asking them out. And then I'm just going to present some to you that I found on the internet. So um, first one today that I thought was really interesting, and let me be specific that these are for company owners. The, this session is not for anybody who is an employee asking for HR assistance. This is specifically for businesses themselves, especially small and micro um, and individual practitioners. So one other thing I thought was really awesome, um, I thought this was a good question that I found on the web. It's like, how do I deal with an employee who is slow in coding and claims that he's trying to code faster but isn't getting any faster? How can I get him fired? Um, moving to an agile platform has shown us how slow he really is. Well, when you're looking at you know, an individual's development. Um, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly who answered this question or what the role is in the organization. I don't know if it's a coworker. I don't know if it's a supervisor. Um, if it's a supervisor, then you know, definitely work with your HR department. But 
you know, when you're starting to talk about an individual's development, if you're noticing deficiencies, you know, you got two plot, you got you got something that's not lining up, right? So you got to understand what the benchmarks are, and is the employee here, here, or here? You know, if they're down here, then you know you want to work to get them up into this area, and the only way to do that is to meet them at where they are, and so. Um, you're going to want to identify learning opportunities and for a specific period of time, you know, you can, you know, start to formulate a plan as to, you know, I'm going to give this individual 90 days or I'm going to give them six months, kind of depending. And if you're, you know, coding is something that takes time to learn. And if you have the, the time and the bandwidth to do that, to work on developing that person, then by all means do it. Um, you know, there's a lot of cost that's involved in identifying another potential individual, but there's also cost in developing an individual as well. So you're going to have to weigh those things out. Um, so if you are working with an individual and you notice that they're starting to make progress, that's fantastic. Ultimately, that's what you want to do. You want to change undesired behavior into desired behavior. But if they start going along and, and they're like here and they haven't yet gotten all the way over and then they start to backslide and then you're trying to get them to coach back up and keep moving that forward and you're kind of vacillating doing this then you're probably going to want to spend some time figuring out okay am i is this an acceptable employee is this a warm body you know you're probably going to want to start figuring out some sort of uh, plan you know because if you've got talent that's just not doing it then you know don't hang on to that talent it's only going to weigh you back down but you're going to have to figure out an effective and safe um, exit as well. Another question I saw today, and I love this question. I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, there's I, every now and again, a question is like, how do you handle a crying woman in the workplace? Well, <laughs> it takes a little tact. But what I thought was funny uh, was the question that says, why did our sisters cry? And, and more or less, how do you how do you handle a crying narcissist? You know, and it, it that doesn't have to be just women either. Years ago, I used to have a boss, and he was the biggest narcissist on the planet, and he would cry, and I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking, dude, holy moly! So, uh, you know, why do narcissists cry? And that is um, a really good question. Narcissists tend to cry because they're crying for themselves. And, and ultimately, and that was, you know, the response in this particular chat, um, they do cry for the same room, but, you know, same reasons, but it really is more intrinsically value, you know, value versus, you know, something that they saw something emotional and it, you know, got them all the clenched and choked up. Um, how do you handle a crying narcissist? Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter who it is, if you could get an individual in the workplace that's having an emotional breakdown of some kind. Um, it could be, you know, they got stuck at home, they're feeling the stress. People tend to, you know, release um, for that. It's a pressure valve. Um, my recommendation is, is to, you know, definitely demonstrate levels of empathy and, um, you know, pull the person out of the environment and, you know, sit down and talk to them and find out what you can do for them. Now, in my crying narcissist position, a uh, guy that I was telling you about, it was a more frequent event than what I would have imagined. And I'm telling you, bless, bless his supervisor because he had to tolerate it more than I did. But, um, you know, it's okay when you've got somebody who's in an emotional status to be able to show empathy, but then yet reset the expectations of their performance. And, you know, give them time to go get themselves cleaned up. Go give them time to go out and have a cigarette or whatever. You can get a cup of coffee, go to lunch, whatever it is so that they can recollect themselves. And then, you know, it's okay to reinforce the expectations of the job. It's okay to reinforce, you know, their expectations of performance and behavior and get them back into the game again. Because if you don't have somebody that's playing on the field effectively, it's a drag on you, your company resources, the people that are working with them is going to impact your vendor relationships. There's a lot of things that are going to take place. So whether it's a narcissist or a crying woman or whatever, and I have had people use um, crying in the middle of a performance conversation as a means to tactfully exit out of the conversation. But what they don't realize is, is that I'm not done talking to you. You're coming back in. And 
Um, a lot of people that I work with always find that to be kind of interesting that I just wouldn't let it die because it was a sensitive issue. It's like, well, it's a bigger issue to me if you're violating company policy. And I understand that you're crying because you got caught for it, but we still need to have the conversation. So, you know, having fair and respectable conversations with, you know, people who are breaking down um, is very important. So uh, by all means. Um, another one that I thought was really good and I can share with you <laughs> my biggest regret ever in hiring somebody. I'll never forget this. So the question was, what red flag you ignored in a coworker only do have regrets later? It actually took place, this was years ago. <clears throat> I, not quite 20 years ago, but it was when I was in the early stages of really learning about, you know, how to be effective in the field of HR and um, understanding how the organization and the company, um, you know, took to interviewing and, uh, reviewing, you know, employees. And um, <clears throat> what it was is that I was, and so we had a general manager um, who was very good at identifying uh, potential candidates before we actually extended an offer. And in this particular situation, he was out of the country on vacation and we had a acting general manager in place. Well, we sat down and we did the, the interview together. And, um, and I noticed that there was a little bit of a difference between the second interview and the third interview with this person. And she wasn't really quite perky and, you know, bouncy, but, but I'm in a learning state. So when I'm in a learning state, I get very, very quiet. And what I did with her is I just kind of left everything there because I wasn't sure if I should have said something, should have not said something. You know, I, it totally blew ocean environment for me at that point in time. Well, anyway, we wound up hiring the person and she came in. Her first day was also on the first day where we had our vice president and we had our <laughs> vice president of the company there. And we had the general manager, it was his first day back, um, and the regional vice president there as well. So we had three very strong influencers in the company all in one shot. And I was giving her a tour and they came up and I was all excited because I'm like, yeah, it's first hire on the team. I'm really looking forward to it. And she was an absolute just, I mean, not even any show of level of energy whatsoever. I gave the weakest, limpest handshake to all three of them. And I'm like, oh my God, like internally, I'm just like smacking myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? And how am I, like, this is so not good. And I just sat there with this excited, smiling face going, you know, hey, listen, this is, you know, that, that this is our VP and whatnot. And needless to say, I got my butt reamed afterwards for it. Like, look, I didn't know if I was supposed to say something. And he's like, I never would have hired this person. Well, ultimately what happened is that over the next year, she was just cantankerous and not fun to be with at all. And it was, it was, it was very difficult. It was not a good experience. So I highly regretted that. And um, I spent a lot of time, anytime I started interviewing, really reconsidering um you know, the, the types of core values that I identify in potential candidates coming into the company. So that was definitely a learning experience that I will never forget. So something else that, um, and we introduced this on the Instagram group, is that my goal is to provide you guys with resources, you know, things that are going to help you guys be more effective in what it is that you do in your business practices and really help you set your gold standards in your business. And if you're a practitioner, if you are, you know, an up and coming HR professional, there is something that you are going to have to learn. And that is business acumen. And it is, this is the language of money. And it's going to get very important throughout your career. So there's a, an awesome resource that's out there. Um, I happen to know the author of this um, particular book, and it is called Seeing the Big Picture. Um, it's written by a gentleman by the name of Kevin Cope. Um, I met Kevin two years ago at the Sherm Convention, the National Convention in New Orleans. Um, we got a chance to reconnect again in Chicago. Really good guy. And he's got a, a really great way of breaking down the concepts of financial management and understanding the money talk when it comes to business. 
in, um, in a way that is digestible. It is something that you can turn around and apply it. And you can do this at any level in the organization. You don't have to be, you know, an apex leader to be able to understand what this is. And, um, and it's a phenomenal book. It's a book that I have uh, recommended and actually provided to veterans when they come out, those that are, you know, qualified to go into higher level leadership positions. Um, it definitely helps individuals understand how to be able to speak the language of business, which is going to be critical and important. And it's based off of, let me see if I can't find the model again. <clears throat> it's based off of a model that talks about cash, people, profit, growth, and assets, and how they are all connected together. So if you guys are going to, show my other camera. <laughs> so if you guys are going to the Sherman Convention this year, um, which is taking place over in Las Vegas, I'm not 100% sure if he's going to be there or not. But, you know, if you look up the website, then you can go ahead and see if he is going to be um, speaking or not. Definitely go listen to what he has to say. Um, I haven't researched him on YouTube or not. I'm not sure if he's got any content out there. But he is definitely, um, definitely one to listen to. He's, he will be able to help you um, get the information that you need. He is the founder of a company called Acumen Learning. Um, really great organization as well. So they've got some pretty awesome stuff that is out there. So other different types of resources that are available, you'll be able to locate them up on the website, on my website. And if you want to find out more about what I do and the information that I put out there, then the best place to start is actually going to the website, which is bestpractices.org. And yeah, you'll be able to look at our affiliates program. And we've got a list of growing companies that I've worked with personally. Um, I know who they are. I know what their capabilities are. Uh, they're good. They're reputable. And I trust them quite a bit. So, um, you know, in the in everything that I touch, my goal is to get more resources out to you guys that are helpful, that make sense, um, that are small business minded or business minded, um, not just out to you know, sell stuff. They're really out there to make a difference in the workplace. So that's a really good place to start. You can also find me on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you guys are here both under the same moniker of best practices in HR. Easy to find. There's going to be a lot more content coming out. Um, like I said, the podcast episode is coming out tomorrow. If you haven't got, if you want to listen to some really good content, um, we just did a, a, a good one with one of my business partners um, in the leadership development program that we're putting in, which I'm going to tell you about in just a second, on um, I don't have time to develop my employees. And his name is Jim Foreman. He is a retired command master chief from the Navy, U.S. Navy SEAL, um, and one of the co-facilitators in a new uh, leadership development program called Forged that we are currently taking applications for and interest. Um, definitely, if you've got somebody that needs a development program, um, you need to put somebody in place or something like that, you need to develop those skills, this is an awesome course, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to roll right now. We're the first course is anticipated to release on May 1st it is three full days, full days. And we've got a lot of really great information uh, that we're going to provide to the participants. But it's based off of really about five or six core values that we feel are very important. Um, we've got Kevin, who's a 30-year retired Command Master Chief, Navy SEAL. We've got Jim, who's a 27-year uh, retired Command Master Chief, U.S. Navy SEAL, and myself who's a 20 year you know, practitioner. So combined between the three of us, you're looking at nearly about 80 years of leadership experience, but it's combined with the HR component in it. And that means that, you know, how do you incorporate your partnership with, um, with you know, your HR team or your HR staff? How does, you know, applying leadership work in conjunction with certain elements of HR? And it just, really kind of opens the senses and opens the eyes. Um, what's really fun about this particular course is that no one person is just going to be uh, successful. It is a team effort. Um, everybody's going to win so long as they stick together. So um, it definitely reinforces the SEAL mindset behind all of that. 
And we also have some really cool team building events, and I, I'm not going to tell you what they are. You guys have to come and experience it, but um, it's unlike anything else that is out there right now. And um, it's going to be an absolute blast. I am so excited and so looking forward to this. Um, so to find that, to go ahead and get your application in process, you're going to want to go to bestpractices.org. And the top menu, you're going to want to click on Forged, F-O-R-G-E-D, and go ahead and submit your information. And um, we'll get your response in the next 24 hours after you submit it. If you do wind up putting in your information, um, and you elect to continue to move forward through the process. If you pay for your course within the first 72 hours, then you are eligible to receive a post-course one-hour coaching session with any of the instructors, um, which is a value of $150. If you know, if you decide that you want to bring somebody else into the course that you like, and you know, why not do the course with you know somebody that you enjoy being around? then by all means, um, if they, they sign up for your class with you, then you can go ahead and uh, potentially earn another one hour post uh, session, post class coaching session with uh, any one of the instructors. You can actually you know, do the second one with somebody else. And that also is $150 value. And in addition to that, right now, we are offering a $500 discount on the program itself. So three full days, meals included, Tremendous amount of information. Uh, the connectivity that happens in, in, as part of it is going to be phenomenal. Um, you get to network with other you know, business leaders that are out there. And then you also have the experience of individuals that have really seen it <laughs> and have been through it. So, so that's really awesome. So at the end of this, so um, if you haven't been able to you know, catch up and uh, jump on to either Facebook or Instagram, um, within the next 24 hours, we're going to pull both of these episodes together and both of these 30 minute sessions together in a recap uh, that will be made accessible on the best practices uh, uh, YouTube channel. So um, stay tuned in the next 24 hours and you're going to get all those things together. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day, grabbing your coffee, sit down. Um, like I said, this is the start to something that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys moving forward and, um, you know, what? bring your questions to the table. Because that's how we all benefit in this world is, you know, having the real conversations about things. So you guys have a really awesome day. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in a week. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for joining. <laughs>